Okay, good evening. Uh, first of all, uh, I have to tell you something just to the audience as well, and whoever sees this, this is a fraud, yeah? The whole thing. Uh, I was invited for Plaza Sibiles, and then I got kidnapped in a North Korean bunker on the moon, yeah? Which I'm here now, so, yeah, so please, everybody outside, help us. We are kidnapped on the moon by the North Koreans, so. Or do you see the Plaza Sibiles here? That's it, yeah. A beautiful fountain. Just, just everybody knows we are not, we are not in Spain here right now. So uh, we are just in a bunker. So what I'm doing is just to summarize the day today. I just want to give you some ideas out of this, and and I'm not that smart. My whole life is a plaidoyer for mediocrity. Yeah. If, uh, for example, somebody has been complaining that the most commonly speaking language yeah, on this planet is bad English. I'm, I'm so glad about this because, uh, look, bad English allows us to communicate and it allows us to talk, but as soon as we understand this is bad English, we can give the other a benefit of a doubt because when we have a misunderstanding. So, <laughs> let's, so let's celebrate bad English. Uh, the thing is, The only problem is when, when, you're, when English is your only language, then it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, therefore, I want to, to run you through some things. Traditionally, people think from cradle to grave, and, and uh, this means that the whole planet will become a graveyard. So, cradle to cradle is an innovation where we can use 30 years of blaming and shaming for innovation. And what you heard with Manuel, what you heard with uh, Antoniella, but with Anna Maria, basically I want to, to, um, yeah, to summarize. So you hear, I'm celebrating my, my terrible German accent for that, and I do this. I sometimes just practice it, because I as well practice my horrible uh, German accident when speaking Dutch or speaking French or Italian, etc. Uh, because, uh, so when you really want to do crowdsourcing, yeah, think about me, my German accent, yeah, crowdsourcing. Yeah. Uh, so we have been growing up by all these environmental disasters, and Civiso, Bhopal, Chernobyl, with all these disasters, we lost basically a whole generation of good scientists who could study chemistry after Bhopal or Basel. Yeah, all the chemical companies changed their names into Aventis, Novartis, whatever, that you don't know that it's a chemical company anymore. Could you study physics after Chernobyl? Yeah. Could you join a company like, uh, yeah, who causes uh, Deepwater Horizon? Yeah. Could you really go there? Um, so I think one of the reasons that the computers, the internet, grew so fast that we uh, lost a whole generation of engineers and scientists and biologists and chemists because uh, the creative people didn't want to be a part of this disaster. But the problem is that the ones who studied science, chemistry, did it with a bad consciousness. So that's why they tried to be less bad. Yeah. So in the, in the year 86, we coined the term sustainability. But uh, if I ask you, uh, how is your relationship with your husband, what do you say, sustainable? then I'm really sorry for you. Yeah. <laughs> if this is our biggest goal, in Dutch it's duurzaam, yeah? you can stand it somehow. Yeah. So the consequences, our first uh, internet development uh, was mostly caused because the traditional science was so corrupt that the young people wouldn't like to join it anymore. But what do, did we really achieve? We now have a nice uh, communication system, but where is the content? Yeah. So what is the message behind it? What is the value? This is why uh, uh, you talk about a radical change, Manuel, and because this is where we are. Yeah. This is a picture of a baby. A baby takes about 6,500 uh, 6, diapers in, in Barcelona. Yeah, a baby has about 6,500 diapers. Maybe in Madrid it's only 6,000. So, yeah. <laughs> But this is only the mountain of one year, yeah. one year just. And so it's about 20% of the remaining waste stream, municipal waste stream, are diapers. 
and because we are getting older, yeah, the diapers get bigger. Yeah. So there's some future in it. Yeah. We are all basically in the breed diaper phase yeah, somehow. So that's why we don't want to exist. Yeah. I was in Copenhagen at the climate conference in, in December 2009 and Copenhagen wants to be carbon neutral in 2025. You only can be carbon neutral if you don't exist. It's the only way. So they signed the declaration, we don't want to exist in 2025. Yeah. <laughs> Just by the Heisenberg uncertainty, you never can be carbon neutral because whatever you do. Yeah. Yeah. But this is where we are. Yeah. We call it efficiency, guilt management. We are 100% bad, 90% bad, 80% bad, and our goal is zero. We don't want to exist That's the best if we can. So does it really make sense to do so efficiency? Think about everything what matters in life. Being efficient, yeah? Think about a nice efficient dinner tonight, yeah? A glass with some metrid, a, 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 a tablet with some metrid, metrid uh, flavor, and a glass of water, very efficient, yeah? Think about uh, Goya being efficient, yeah? Think about Mozart being efficient. So everything in life which really matters efficient, think about efficient tango, yeah? So this is our idea. Let's talk, talk to the basis, to the roots. Yeah. People talk about minimizing their carbon footprint. Yeah. Uh, the first thing is then they grow corn to make biogas. How <laughs> funny. Yeah. But you lose between 11 and 30 tons of topsoil when you grow corn. That's more than you can get when you make biogas later. Um, two thirds of all the carbon is in vegetation and, and soil right now. Yeah? In Spain, we lose up to 8,000 times more soil than we make. But this is where the carbon is. Did you ever see somebody really calculated about carbon uh, with a nice computer program? No, we do this by hand. Yeah? Because all the uh, I see information technology engineers don't care about these things, they even don't know about them. Yeah? So our aim is zero emissions. These are big advertising everywhere. And I'm not talking about any company because it's all the same thing. So the aim is zero emission. You can only be zero when you don't exist. Yeah, zero emissions, if even if you would shoot yourself, you would have emissions, so don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> and so it, does, it doesn't help us at all. But you see, when you see a baby yeah, on this picture, our aim is zero emissions that it means it's better you don't exist. Yeah? That's a message. And when you look at computers, we do everything that babies don't exist. Yeah? So this is the off-casing diagram of a computer. So I put the, the computer in a glass box and look what is off-casing. Why don't we make first hardware, yeah, the first computer in human history, and I partner with all of you we want, which is designed for indoor use, the first one. Every peak what you see here is, is a chemical off-casing. We easily find 200 to 300 carcinogenic chemicals off gazing from a computer, easily. So whenever you uh, use your computer, open the window. Yeah? It's never designed for indoor use, yeah? never. Yeah? So in the, all these peaks are chemicals. We identify them because I'm a chemist and a chemical engineer first. Here, you start with a simple computer mouse, yeah? for example. Yeah? The, all the peaks are chemicals off gazing from that. Yeah? Never designed for human beings only designed to make money, obviously. This is the first TV set which we designed, and don't look at the company for that. The peaks which you see extra here are only to mark the, the analytical equipment to make sure that we are working correctly. This is the first TV set designed for indoor use. It's marketed as Econova, how stupid. Uh, it's just the best TV ever made in human history. Yeah. It's the first TV set for indoor use. Yeah. We look at all different types of materials and we see copper is far more rare than oil. Yeah? But we lose it, we call it environmental protection when we burn waste, <laughs> and we, but we lose all the copper. Amazing. We feel so terribly bad to be on this planet that there is not one label which allows, not one organic label, we think organic food is great, yeah? not one organic label which allows that our own excrements can go back. Yeah? Every day we need to pick up two grams of phosphate, every day we need to put it in the environment, but when we want to put it back into agriculture, there's not one organic label which allows it. But there's far more radioactivity being bind by the phosphate industry than it's used in all nuclear power plants. And what we do, we spread it all in the environment and increase our contamination with that. Uh, but we feel only, it's only organic when we are not involved. Yeah. Isn't it sad? We feel so terrible for being on this planet. 
just making copper in Europe makes three times more waste than all the municipal waste stream of, of uh, Europe. Yeah. So it just causes far more waste. And we lose it. The recycling rate because of efficiency was never that low. Because when you make the components smaller and smaller, it's more and more difficult to get them back. Because there is no software for that. Yeah. There's nothing who col how to collect stuff back in it because there's no content in the whole uh, electronic stuff. Then we have our great heroes who said, no gold is more crucial for healing the global environment and stabilizing human population. <laughs> yeah. In Israel, we say, when you save one life, you save the planet. Yeah. Here it says, the more you kill, the better. Yeah. That's the logic. Yeah. So as soon as we question the existence of people, we see this in Israel as well, then you uh, do very simple things. You make people greedy and you make them aggressive and unfriendly. If you look at the poorest of the poor, they are friendly and sharing and not greedy at all when they feel accepted, when they feel safe. So if you tell people it's better you're not here, how can you expect them not to be greedy? Yeah. That doesn't work. So we are not too many people. But just best, El Gore did great work to help people to understand the greenhouse effect, but he makes one key mistake. He says the greenhouse effect is a moral issue. Yeah. But it's not a moral issue. Look, not only the Germans forget moral issues immediately when they're under stress. Yeah. So, for example, putting some money into Greece, whatever, immediately there is no moral issue anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, when you make it a moral issue, it's stupid because you forget it when you need it. More, yeah. Under stress, moral disappears. Yeah. So if, if you don't look for the greenhouse effect today, you're just an idiot. That's enough. Yeah. You don't need moral issues for that anymore. Yeah. So we are not too many people. We define environmental protection when we destroy less. People say, please protect the environment, uh, use less water, re reduce your waste, reduce your energy consumption. That would be the same logic if I say, uh, please protect your child, beat your child only five times instead of ten times. Yeah. We're not protecting, we only destroy less. And in that logic, I can tell you, never take the stairs in a building. Yeah. Because when you take the stairs in the building, it takes for a vegetarian lady five times more energy to, to, to make calories to, to walk the stairs than to take the elevator. Because to make food is so much more energy intensive than lifting a person in the elevator. So if you want to protect the environment in that logic, always take the elevator. Yeah. You can minimize your carbon footprint for 80%, 80%. But these ants, for example, they never take elevators. They work so much harder than we do physically, and they live only three to six months. Yeah. Then uh, it means that they equal about 30 billion people in their calorie cons consumption. So we are not too many, we are just too stupid. We are not smart enough. So, and by the way, when you take the elevator instead of the stairs, yeah, you die a little earlier, it can minimize your carbon footprint even more. Yeah. Isn't it great? Yeah. <laughs> so this is why it's not about efficiency, it's about effectiveness, to say what is the right thing, not to do things right. But by getting only guild managers into the chemical industry, yeah, we only now have people who try to be less bad. Yeah. I met somebody from the world's largest chemical company and said, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm from that company, yeah, which I don't mention, yeah. uh, but uh, I try my best. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sorry for that, but I try my best. For being less bad, we are too many people on this planet. So this is why, why it's about effectiveness. So it's about doing the right thing. That's why Manuel's contribution is so important. Yeah, to say what matters really. It's not about doing things right. If you need to go from here to Lisbon, it doesn't help you to go efficiently into Barcelona. Yeah. So you need to say what is the right thing and then you can optimize it. Otherwise you only make the, perfect, the wrong things perfect and then they are perfectly wrong. In that logic, for example, Poland has been protecting the environment so much better than France just by inefficiency. Yeah. So if you do something wrong, don't make it perfect. In the Netherlands, we try to help the whole country to change into cradle to cradle, and the Dutch understand it very well because, the, first of all, they have a lot of great artists. Yeah? Think about Van Gogh efficient. Van Gogh was the first dot com, basically. Yeah? Yeah. And yeah, if you base your culture on tulips, completely inefficient. Yeah? So whenever your wife gets angry about you, 50 roses, completely inefficient but amazingly effective. Yeah? Or, or in the Netherlands, for example, a woman eats about 6.3 kilograms of lipstick during her lifetime. 
this is not really accurate because we cannot calculate how much gets kissed away. But overall, it's, you know, I can tell you such a lipstick just looking at you here, staring at you, yeah, uh, completely inefficient but amazingly effective. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you see, it's about effectiveness. So what is the right thing? Yeah. So it's nice to reduce your, your fossil fuel consumption, but where is your positive footprint, please? Just to be for trying to be less bad, we are too many. Yeah. When you're in Sweden, your footprint means destruction. Yeah? You're de destroying the soil. That's why you try to minimize your footprint. But when you're in Spain, your footprint means the water stays long in a meadow. So why don't you have a big footprint, but make it a wetland? Yeah. <laughs> so look at the tree in spring. No reduction, no avoidance, no minimization, no guilt management. Yeah? But everything is food. Everything can go in a biological system or technical system. So this is not about zero waste, because even when you think about zero waste, you still think about waste. Yeah? Don't think about a pink crocodile, you think about a pink cro crocodile, or pink elephant, or whatever you want. Yeah? So everything can become nutrient. Pieces which you cut off when you make these chairs in Europe are declared as hazardous waste. We can make them, that you can put them in biological systems to make food. Technical nutrients the same. It's taken up by a lot of companies. So what about the hardware first? We could mine the copper back. We need to do this all over Europe. Yeah? You, you can do with, with glass fibers, you can do it with seven kilograms of glass fibers, the same capacity what you can do with 2.8 tons of copper. So let's take the copper out in you know, urban mining because copper is far more critical. You can make buildings like trees, cities like forests. I work with my famous colleague, Willie McDonough, and we basically enjoy to reinvent all the stuff for that. That's why it's a triple top line. Good for economy, good for society, and good for the environment, not less bad for the environment. Coming to that picture, yeah, a baby takes 6,500 diapers. When you change, change the super absorbers, yeah, when you change the super absorbers, when you change the plastic, with one baby you could grow 150 trees in Israel. Yeah just with it because of the storage capacity yeah, of the water. So the baby can be carbon positive from the very, very beginning. So why do we want to be less bad? What we need is the same like we have the logistics, the <coughs> software for the distribution of the stuff, we need it now for the redistribution. Yeah? So to put plastic into the ocean is yeah, unethical, definitely, so what? It's just stupid, it's bad chemistry. So don't talk about green chemistry, green architecture, green ICT. Talk about quality, holistic quality, or holistic beauty. It's not beautiful when it poisons children. It's not beautiful when it makes waste. It's not beautiful when it doesn't allow people to live on this planet. People have so many children out of fear. Yeah. If we, they wouldn't have fear, then they would not have that many children. So we generate overpopulation out of fear by uh, blaming people for overpopulation. Yeah. So why don't we have a positive footprint? Why don't we reinvent everything? But this means that now the smartest people really, really need to join us. They need to learn science, they need to come back, they need to work on programs for not just another computer game, but really about how to close loops, how to put things in biological and technical cycles. This is radical, this is innovation, this is about beauty, this is about learning languages, it's about all the stuff which we heard today. Thank you very much.